So in this part of the series, we're going to be learning about arrow functions. So arrow functions provide a much shorter way to write anonymous functions in JavaScript. They give you a much cleaner syntax, but they don't include their own this variable, which is something we're going to learn about in this video. So as always, if you want to learn more, you can look at this article on howcode.org, but let's get started. So this is a regular function in JavaScript. It adds two numbers together and it returns the result. And this is the equivalent arrow function in JavaScript. So we can ignore that variable. All we did there was give our arrow function a name, but arrow function functions themselves are anonymous. So this is the syntax here. We take our parameters, we use the equal sign and the greater sign, and we run our code on the right hand side of that. Arrow functions actually have a variety of syntaxes. So you'll notice this arrow function has curly brackets and a return keyword, but the exact same arrow function in my code has no return keyword and no curly brackets because if we leave the curly brackets out we don't need a return because the return is implicit. So I'm going to delete this code for now and we're going to run these two functions. They do the exact same thing but this is a regular function and this is an arrow function. And when we run that you can see we get the exact same result. So one benefit of arrow functions is they're just a more clean concise syntax but another good place to use arrow functions is in callbacks. So here we have an array of users. So these are just objects in our user array. Each object has an ID and a username. And say we want to extract the usernames from everyone in our array. What we could do is loop through the array and just print out the usernames or store them in a new array. But JavaScript has a built-in function for that called map, which will just take our array and it will let us return whatever values out of the array we want. And the map function takes a callback, which is what this anonymous function is called here. But arrow functions make this a lot cleaner because with an arrow function, we can reduce that to one line. We give our user as the parameter. We say we're creating an arrow function and we use the implicit return property of arrow functions to just say we want to return user.username. So if I run that now, you can see we get an array with just the usernames out of our original users array, which in this case has IDs, but it could have lots more properties that we don't want as well. So the last part of arrow functions I want to talk about is that they don't have their own this variable. So let's see what I mean by that. Here I've created an object called user. It has a username and it has a function called hello and a function called bye. And the function called hello is just a regular function. Whenever I say hello, my name is this.username, this function will have access to this variable. But this arrow function, when I say goodbye this.username, it won't have access to the this keyword because this is a special variable in JavaScript and arrow functions don't have access to any of those. So if I run this, you can see the first one works properly. It says, hello, my name is Francis. And the second one says goodbye undefined. So that's a quick overview of arrow functions in JavaScript. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.